Tomo News presents The Moon. Supermoon to light up the night sky on December 3rd. On December 3rd, 2017, the world will be able to see a supermoon. During a supermoon event, the lunar body can become bigger and up to 30% brighter. This is because the moon orbits closer to the Earth than it does in a regular orbit. NASA advises that a supermoon is best viewed outside a city as powerful urban lights can diminish how bright it actually is. Are you going to watch the cosmic event unfold? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Anybody up for some lunar cave diving? Scientists this week may have come across something that could lead to the first ever human outpost in space. A large and cavernous lava tube was this week confirmed to exist beneath the surface of the moon. These tubes are volcanic underground passages formed by flowing lava to funnel this substance. Once the flow stops, the tube remains with features similar to a cave. The discovery was made by a team of Japanese and American scientists who used data from the Selene and Grail spacecraft to acoustically map the enormous lava tube. The chasm is around 100 meters wide and 50 kilometers long and located in the Marius Hills region of the celestial body. It could provide shelter to astronauts during moon missions, protecting them from dangerous cosmic radiation. This could potentially allow for the development of a lunar exploration base. And that moon-based Homo sapiens could very well lead to a human colony. Russia and the EU have set their sights on settling the moon. A future manned moon base will be one step closer if a planned joint EU-Russia mission to place a lander on the moon's south pole succeeds. In five years, the European and Russian space agencies will land the Luna 27 probe on the edge of the moon's south pole Aitken Basin. As parts of the South Pole are shielded from the heat of the sun, the region is darker and colder than other areas of the moon. Scientists say that here, water has frozen and collected at the surface. The water could be used as a potential resource to support future human missions at this location. The European Space Agency hopes to build lunar habitats on the lunar South Pole as early as 2024, and plans to deploy inflatable domes on the moon's surface as shelter for astronauts. 3D printing robots will build a layer of dirt around the domes. The ESA says the lunar base they hope to build within the next decade could replace the International Space Station as the new base for astronauts to experience life in space. Private German Moon Mission to Inspect Apollo 17 Rover A team of scientists in Germany has developed a lunar rover that will soon fly to the moon and visit the legendary Apollo 17 lunar rover vehicle. The rover, dubbed Audi Lunar Quattro, is made of aluminum and titanium and was created almost entirely with 3D printing technology. It is equipped with Audi's four-wheel drive technology, solar panels, rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, and science-grade high-definition cameras. Two rovers will be carried by the Alina spacecraft, which stands for the Autonomous Landing and Navigation Module. Alina will also carry several other payloads, including a lunar plant growth experiment. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will likely be used to transport the rovers into space. Alina will touch down about 5 kilometers from the Apollo 17 in the Taurus Lithro Valley. After landing, the two rovers will be deployed and travel toward the Apollo 17 lunar rover. However, they are not allowed any closer than 200 meters from the Apollo rover, per NASA's request. The rovers will send live HD pictures of the Apollo rover back to Earth. The scientists are one of the 16 teams competing for the $30 million Google Lunar X prize. However, they said the ultimate goal wasn't really to win the money, but to reach the Apollo 17 rover. Water on the moon could fuel extended missions. Researchers at Brown University believe the moon's interior could be packed full of water. Water is found at the moon's poles, and scientists believe it exists there as a result of hydrogen brought by solar wind. However, according to a new study, magma eruptions from the moon's interior billions of years ago trapped water inside tiny beads of glass found in lunar rock. Satellite data collected by a lunar orbiter shows that these water-trapping glass beads are widespread on the moon's surface. Researchers have concluded that these water deposits are the result of magma that came from deep within the moon, meaning its interior must therefore contain water. Just how much water, however, is a question that no one can answer right now. 
But the researchers say future missions to the moon could potentially extract water from its surface, which would open the door to longer stays up there. Look who's going back to the moon. The Indian Space Research Organization has announced plans to send a rover to the moon early next year, nearly a decade after its first lunar journey met with mixed success. The spacecraft for India's Chandrayaan-2 moon mission is comprised of an orbiter, a lander and a rover, which will first slingshot around Earth before going into lunar orbit. The lander will attempt a controlled or soft landing near the moon's south pole, while the orbiter travels around the moon. Once on the surface, the lander will take thermal measurements and deploy the six-wheeled rover to explore the lunar terrain. Among the things the mission will pay close attention to are abrasive particles known as lunar dust, which pose a significant challenge to human colonization of the moon. The Chandrayaan-2 will be carried into space by the GSLV Mark II rocket and is scheduled to launch from an island in the Bay of Bengal in March 2018. India will carry out the final testing phase for the spacecraft in the coming weeks. The program's budget for the mission is relatively small, at only $93 million. SpaceX to fly two tourists around the moon next year. This week, SpaceX announced bold plans to next year fly two paying passengers around the moon using technology that's still in development. In 2018, SpaceX hopes to fly two private citizens deeper into space than any human has journeyed previously. The two travelers will trek some 400,000 miles around and beyond the moon during the seven-day mission before looping back to Earth. Before training for the mission, SpaceX says each of the unnamed passengers will undergo a series of tests for their health and fitness. The passengers are set to travel aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, shot into orbit by a multi-stage Falcon Heavy rocket. The still-in-design rocket's first stage consists of three reusable rockets that produce half a million pounds of thrust. After separating, the central rocket propels the payload into orbit, where it continues on its voyage. SpaceX founder Elon Musk says the travelers will be trained for emergencies. However, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is also still being developed, will be mainly piloted autonomously. The crew can monitor real-time ship diagnostics, change the temperature, and take in views through one of the vessel's four windows. The spacecraft will conduct a flyby of the surface of the moon before traveling further out into space, where no human has gone before. It will then use the moon's gravity to slingshot back toward Earth. SpaceX hopes to launch the mission in late 2018, following a series of tests on the rocket and spacecraft. The identity of those traveling remains unknown, but one thing's for sure, they're very brave individuals indeed, and possibly also Scrooge McDuck Rich. And you thought the moon was made of cheese. Researchers in Israel have revived a decades-old theory that the moon was created by a series of collisions in space. Many scientists believe the moon was created when a Mars-sized planet crashed into Earth billions of years ago. However, the Israeli researchers say simulations show their theory is the correct one. According to some experts, the moon was created over millions of years by objects in space colliding with Earth. Multiple impacts and material from the planet flying into space. That material then began orbiting Earth. The objects hit Earth at different angles, which sent more material into space than would have occurred from a single impact. According to researchers, the objects that collided with Earth had between a hundredth and a tenth of the planet's mass. So much material was excavated from Earth by these collisions that a ring of debris formed around the planet. As the debris orbited Earth, it then collided, forming small moons known as moonlets. As many as 20 moonlets then collided together over millions of years to form the moon. The researchers say this explains why the moon has an Earth-like chemical makeup. A widely believed theory says a planet called Theia provided most of the building materials for the moon when it crashed into Earth 4.5 billion years ago. 
But now the Israeli scientists say more research into the interiors of Earth and the Moon is needed to prove their theory right. Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the Moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system, in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the Moon, Mars and beyond. A Japanese architecture and engineering firm has a plan to turn the moon into a giant solar power plant. It proposes building a collection of solar panels called a lunar ring, 11,000 kilometers long by 19 kilometers wide on the moon's equator. The belt would receive power directly from the sun. The solar power would then be beamed to Earth via microwaves and lasers. The company said it could continuously send 13,000 terawatts of power back to Earth at full capacity. The company is planning on building the lunar ring with robots.